it is really important that we update our priors, update our assumptions about generative AI regularly as the data warrants. In this case, it's a big deal. We have a giant jump in weekly usage of AI reported by Wharton Business School. They did a longitudinal study of the same people from 23 and 24, and what they came back with is a jump from 37% usage once a week last year in 2023 to 72% usage once a week this year. These people are uh, leading departments at businesses ranging from $50 million in size all the way up past $2 billion. And so they got to get a sense of the department level usage for these generative AI tools. And what you see is that same doubling pattern repeated across the board. Purchasing and procurement, 50% usage last year. 99, no, 94% usage this year, 94, still stunning. Uh, product and engineering, 40% usage last year, up to 78% usage this year. Management up from 26 to 69% this year. Marketing up from 20 to 62% this year. It's a really consistent lift across the board, and we probably should update our baseline assumptions around how many people are using AI at work. The starter assumption of it being a third is probably inaccurate at this point. It's probably closer to two thirds. Now you might be wondering, do these two thirds of people have controls? Can they just do whatever they want? Well, anecdotally, I've been hearing that they can just do whatever they want and half of orgs report that roughly. And that is more distributed towards smaller businesses. Larger businesses tend to have controls, which is what I've heard as well. So that one's not too much of a surprise. One of the things that, that is interesting to me is that I see that the adoption and usage is actually led by smaller businesses this time. So businesses uh, between $50 million and uh, on up toward a billion dollars are 80% usage that I, I'm a little bit surprised, but like basically they, they cross tab, they cut the average usage once a week. And they said, well, how does that split out by business size? And businesses that are smaller are at 80% usage and businesses that are that are much larger, that are in the enterprise range above $2 billion, they have lower usage rates. And that comes back through in the number of permissions required to use generative AI. Like you see that if you are an enterprise, it is actually much less likely that you can use AI with no restrictions. Uh, and in fact, it, it, uh, roughly three quarters of people at larger businesses above $2 billion report substantial restrictions on their ability to use AI. And so what's my takeaway from all this? Well, the first place I go and look, I, I, I'm not too surprised that usage is growing. The top line number is eye popping. Doubling in a year is a lot. Uh, we never really saw that with uh, internet, with email. Like we didn't have this kind of growth, even though it was really exciting growth. But I look at the activities. What are people actually spending their time doing with generative AI? And that's sort of where I go for understanding what's happening. And most people are doing pretty basic stuff. So document editing, 64%, a little bit of analysis, 62%, and summarizing documents, 59%. These are ABC use cases for generative AI. They're not super fancy. And that means that there's a lot of room left for the larger corporations, for smaller corporations to figure out that generative AI can do a whole lot more for them than just edit their docs. And I don't think people necessarily know that. And I think one of the things that this study doesn't get at effectively is how do you measure adoption of more complex workflows or building you know, tool chains that enable larger and uh, more complicated work to be done? The other thing that this study doesn't really get at is to what extent these organizations are building AI solutions into their products and I think that's deliberate. And I think the reason it's deliberate is because their study is broad. And in many cases, if you are making bolts, if you are making uh, rug cutters, if you are making anything that's physical, it's not necessarily gonna be wrapped into your product. And if you want a wider survey of 
business leaders, you're going to have to wrap in folks beyond the software business. And so if you're doing that, it doesn't really make sense to say, hey, generative AI, are you building generative AI into your latest rug, rug cutter, right? Like that's, that's not going to happen. Okay. But they're still just using this for simple things. And to me, that represents a opportunity for people to help folks understand what is in the box when it comes to AI and how big that space is and how much there is uh, that you can build and unlock. What's interesting is leaders recognize that training is needed. One of the things that they said they would substantially increase investment in was training their teams for generative AI. But I think one of the challenges is that they don't really yet know what to train in. If you dig into the cross tabs, there's not really an understanding of what generative AI training should include. And I think that's a big opportunity for consultants. I think it's a big opportunity to set the table and say, this is what's needed for generative AI fluency. Um, and I think it's one of the things that I will be really curious to see if they do the survey again next year, because I would expect the sophistication of usage to go up. Uh, I would expect more complicated uh, workflows to be mentioned more frequently. And I would expect that uh, generative AI training would be something that people understand better. Like, I'm glad people are enthusiastic. I'm glad they want to budget for it. Don't get me wrong. But we need to know what we're asking for. We need to know what we're training to, to be effective. And I think that's really shown. One last takeaway. 90% of firms are leading AI internally, and that's really split. Half of them are saying they're leading AI with multiple teams, half with one team. But the consultants are not leading the AI strategy here. And that's something that's really, really clear when you look through the report. The consultants just are uh, there to help, there to assist, but not necessarily there to take the lead. Organizations seem to view it as really important that they own this. Uh, and half of the ones surveyed have a chief AI officer. So that is a real job title. I'd wondered how much of a real job title it was, but based on self-reports, it's a real job title and it's growing quickly. So we're going to see probably AI departments as well is something that I would expect. And that's an interesting job family shift. We will see. All right, that is the Wharton study. I will link it here in the YouTube. I think it's worth a look because I want it to update my thinking. I want it to update your thinking on where AI actually is at in businesses because it shapes how we build software. It shapes how we think about the products we launch. It shapes how we understand who we would expect to know about AI versus who we would not expect to know about AI. Okay, there you go. Wharton study. I'll link it.